rat-a-tat-tat. I'm glad to see you're back. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today, it's October 10th. It's Tuesday. Now, we do the same thing in all the shows here. We like to discuss hot OTC and penny stocks. That is to say, we're looking for stocks on any market that's under five bucks that can make us some money. Now, when I go looking for these hot stocks to share with you, I'm looking at the charts. Literally, I bring up a penny stock scan. Uh, it's double zero one to three, sometimes five, and I just start going through every chart. I don't know what company I'm looking at. I'm just looking at the charts and I'm looking for heat. I'm looking for a lot of volume coming in or a breakout setup or a lot of big bounces getting higher and higher. Something that makes that chart look interesting. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to rustle around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find one, there's a hot penny stock for you. I lean on the charts as long as we've got wood to put on that fire. I'm confident. And these are the sort of stocks I bring to you each day. And I've got three for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Rockwell Medical, ticker RMTI. Now her chart isn't looking bad. She is going through all of the standard procedures for an atypical breakout. She scraped across the 200 hall, which we've been talking a lot about here. She's gotten on top of the 50 and she's pushing towards the 200. And what's most interesting about this chart is that the 200 is leveling off without any big spike going through it first, which is normally what I look for. And their business is exploding. In the last month, they have had a lot of news about how much more business they're doing and they're already doing strong revenues. So I think it's a good time to consider RMTI. Rockwell Medical finished today at $2.42 with just a little over 12% gains. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. Well, you got benefits when you trade these penny stocks on the major exchange. You don't have to pay any transaction fees. Most brokers are still charging for OTC. And you get to trade this pre-market, aftermarket where there is a lot of activity and money to be made. So what is RMTI about? Well, the company helps people who have kidney disease primarily by giving them the service and the products for dialysis. Rockwell Medical Inc. is a healthcare company that develops, manufactures, commercializes, and distributes a portfolio of hemodialysis products for dialysis providers worldwide. Rockwell's medical's mission is to provide dialysis clinics and the highest quality products. Hemodialysis is the most common form of end-stage kidney disease treatment and is typically performed at freestanding outpatient dialysis centers, hospital-based outpatient centers, skilled nursing facilities, or even in the patient's home. Rockwell Medical's products are vital to the vulnerable patients with end-stage kidney disease, and the company is relentless in providing unmatched reliability and customer service. Right now, Rockwell Medical is the second largest supplier of acid and biocarbonate concentrates for dialysis patients in the United States and intends to become the leading global supplier of hemodialysis concentrates. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <laughs> well, here we go again. It's a little more than her average volume, which is good. It's an increase, but they're very low numbers. Jumping from 301,000 up to 332,000. Share structure for Rockwell? Well, all he give us here is the outstanding share count, which isn't bad. We're here at about 28, 29 million. Our float isn't going to be any higher than that and could be considerably less. So we're at a good starting point. Market cap for this company, about 61 and a half million. Checking out the financials for the company. They've been doing good. For the last three years, they've been roughing around 60 million. We know it's millions because they tell us three more zeros got to be added to any of the numbers on any of these charts. At the end of 2022, they jumped $11 million. After just doing 60 for three years, boom, we've added another 10 here. Looking at the quarterly, that's running an average of between 18 and 19 million, and they are in the profits right now. Taking a quick look at that balance sheet. Cash in the bank, they have almost $9 million. Short-term investments, money they can expect back soon, about $6 million. Net receivables, money that's due them right now, $5.4 million. 
They've got a lot of current assets. That's 27 million. Add in their long-term assets, they're up to 38 million. Total liabilities is 28 million. They are up over 8 million. They're looking pretty good. Strong revenues, strong assets. Taking a look at the disclosures. All right, we've got some 8Ks here, three of them, because we've got three pieces of news and each one of these 8Ks correlates to that news and I do want to go through these with you. So each one of these came out in the last month. Rockwell Medical enters into products purchase agreement with its largest customer enhancing relationship through 2024. The company enters a three-year product purchase agreement with Sanderling Reno Services, expands distribution capabilities westward into Utah. And the last piece that came out here in October, the company enters into a three-year product purchase agreement with the Centers for Dialysis Care. Now the headlines don't give us enough information. They're not doing justice for, for these deals. So let's just take a look at a couple paragraphs here. Uh, this deal with their largest customer. Today, the company announced that they had entered into an amended and restated products purchase agreement with its largest customer. This agreement enhances Rockwell's business with increased purchase volumes and revenue, which represents an increase over the revenue generated from this customer last year. So they're going to be doing more business than they did last year with the same customer. The other piece of news, the three-year product purchase agreement with Sandler and Reno Services. The company entered into a three-year product purchase agreement with Sandler Renal Services, a full-service provider of in-center, home dialysis, and renal telemedicine services, focusing on patients in rural and underserved communities across the United States. Rockwell Medical will be the preferred supplier to Sanderling's facilities located throughout California, Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Illinois, and Utah. And that last piece of news, which is actually the most current piece of news, the company enters into a three-year product purchase agreement with Centers for Dialysis Care. The company announced that they entered into a three-year product purchase agreement with Centers for Dialysis Care, the largest nonprofit independent outpatient dialysis provider in Northeast Ohio. Rockwell Medical will be the preferred supplier of liquid and dry acid bicarbonate hemodialysis concentrates and related accessories to CDC and its nearly 20 facilities located throughout Northeastern Ohio. So you can see how they're covering lots more states. They're getting these contracts for many years and dialysis is something everybody needs. And the company is focused on that. They're not doing a whole lot of other things. This is all they do. So as much as I don't like biotechs, I don't think of this as a biotech. They've got a product, they've got a service. They're opening up their own clinics. They're making this product to provide for those clinics. I think it's a good business. They're making steady revenues and the business is just growing. And the chart, it's ready to break out. At least it's setting up for it. So who else here really likes charting? Whoa, Raymond put his hand up real fast. <laughs> We're going to do our charting on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You get this free when you sign up for TD Ameritrade. And that doesn't cost you anything either. So we are looking at Rockwell Medical, ticker RMTI. This is a one-day, one-year chart. We've got our 52-week low back in November of 84 cents, well under the 200. And then we've got our high here in July of $6.24, well above the 200. Once she got over that 200, she was up there for a long time until she lost the ghost and she fell hard and fast down to the 200 and she was scrapping with this for quite a while trying not to lose it and then she lost it. But right now, it looks like she's trying to recover. Coming down to that six month, four hour view. Now our new low bubble is $1.23. We see that run up over top of that 200 and that big fall. We had a bounce here where she was wrestling. She did not want to fall, but something really yanked her down. She's come down here, and right now she is working herself back up. Now you can see she is floating right over top of this 200-day haul. We've been talking a lot about this recently because penny stocks are heating to it. The 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. 
averages 200 days of prices together, but then gives more credence to current prices. So you end up with a more current 200 day SMA closer to the price. And this is floating right over top of it, as we've seen with a lot of penny stocks. And she's pushed away right here, got settled on top of the 50 day SMA for quite a few days. And now she's confident she's jumped. She has pushed herself for the last four days floating on that nine day SMA. Our 20 is right behind that. 50 right there, everything is close, looking good. The only thing I would like to see is more volume. It's steady, but we could definitely use a jump. Our oscillators are looking real good. Four days ago, we had a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator. It is climbing nicely. PPO is a lot like your MACD. You want that blue line over top of the other. It too is climbing right now. We got green bars accumulating and our RSI is hot. That is up there at 68, almost 69 right now. And look at that. Look at our 200 day SMA. That is virtually flat, almost there. And we do not have a big green bar spiking this. That's what you normally need to help pull those 200 day SMAs flat. There's nothing there and she is almost flat. This looks primed for a rip. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, isn't that pretty? Our 200 day SMA was falling all of this time and right now it is curving up. And right here where it was starting to go flat, you can see a perfect example of a breakout. Here she was trying, bang, 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 hitting her head on that 200, but it's still too steep. Once it got flat enough, she was gone. This happens over and over again, folks. She jumped here from $1.92 and she has been running for four days with the dip in the middle up to a high of $2.48. You're looking at 25, 30% gains there roughly. And she's holding it. She is up there. She's pulled back just a little bit after market hours, but she ain't falling. She's well above her 200 and looking strong. Oscillators, our PPO and our MACD are shooting to the moon right now. They are very strong. Our RSI now is in the overbought on fire at 70. Check out our five day, five minute. Well, she was under the 200 here for the first two days of the week, hitting that low of $1.93. Once she got up on top of the 200, that was it. She is fully respecting the 200. She bounced on it quite a few times here. She got under it, but that's the magnet effect. It's not like she fell away, she stuck right up underneath. That's okay. And then she came right back up. Now what we've got going on is this sideways activity. Normally you see sideways accumulation when it's waiting for a strong SMA to come up so it can bounce off of it, get some extra push. Well, we got a little bit of push from the 50 day SMA here, but then she came back down. What's she doing? Well, she's definitely sitting on top of the 50 day SMA. She has not come underneath it. I mean, she has, but she is above it. She's sitting on top of it. The 200 is on an uptrend right now. The volume was strong at the end of the day, but all of our oscillators are giving us no hints. They are all planted and level right now. So I can't tell you, it is just like that, a perfectly straight line. But everything else that's going on tells me this thing is probably going to climb. She's got a decent float. It's under 28 million. She's got lots of new contracts working in lots of new states. Her revenues have been growing and they're going to get even bigger. Do you know any reason not to put RMTI on your watch list? If you do, put it down there in the comments. Tickety tickety talk. Let's take a look at another stock. This is Rainmaker Worldwide, ticker R-A-K-R. Now her chart's looking good. She had a big breakout October 2nd. She had some big news come out, which was hard to find. It's not here at the OTC market. I had to go to Google to find it. Well, she took off on that day. And after that big rip, she came back down, but not as far as you would think. And right now it looks like she's ready to take off again. And that news, it's about a merger that they've been trying to close for a while. So Raker finished the day at double zero two five with just under 9% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She does have a transfer agent verified, but we don't see a verified profile. Now those two green ticks, we're talking about these all the time because they're validated information and we're looking at a pink 
Pinks don't give you any validated information, not even their financials. That's why they call them disclosures. So we like to get some validated information when we're looking at pinks. Now it's not a deal breaker that we don't see it here, but we would feel better seeing it there sooner rather than later. They do have independent directors listed over here. That's a good thing. The only reason you list independent directors here is when you have plans to uplist. Now, as I say often, I have not read that anywhere, but they are listed here. So you may find it in one of their filings, who knows how far back. And they tell us that they're a shell risk. This means that they're in business, they're doing something, but they're not making any money, which is never a good thing. So this news that's coming out right now, it is big news. It is going to affect their revenues in a huge way and it expands their business a lot further around the world. So what does Rainmaker Worldwide do specifically? Well, they tell us here that Rainmaker Worldwide is headquartered in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada and is a global leader in the water technology sector. Our technology is delivered to our clients either through water as a service model or by directly delivering water to them. Rainmaker owns 12% stake in Rainmaker Holland, a privately held innovation and manufacturing center in Rotterdam, Netherlands. Rainmaker deploys two types of energy efficient, freshwater producing technologies to communities and corporations who need it most. One, air to water, which harvests fresh water from humidity and heat in the atmosphere. And two, water to water which transforms seawater or polluted water into drinking water or commercial grade input water. Our technology is powered by wind, solar, electric grid or diesel or a combination where possible. It is deployable anywhere and leaves no carbon traces when using renewable energies. Yeah, you gotta stay away from that diesel fuel. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around the company today? That's a nice increase. She's definitely not under the radar. She's doing over 19 million shares a day. Today, she did over 27 million. Share structure for Rainmaker. Got lots of information here. Outstanding share count is pretty high. Just under a half a billion shares, 447 million. Ooh, look at this. That's what they've got is a half a billion shares. Now, the reason I take concern with that, think of this as your bank account. And this is how much you have to spend. All you have left is a little bit in the bank. Well, they need this in case they need to put more shares on the market to make money for themselves. Hopefully they don't need to do that. Or they want to make a deal with another company. They give them shares instead of money. So they don't have a lot in the bank right now. Restricted shares. This is how many the management own. They've got themselves about 60 million of those and we get all the rest. We have a float of roughly 386 million if those numbers are correct. That's a pretty high float. It's not the worst we've seen. It's not horribly horrible, but it's a pretty high float. Checking out the financials for Raker. Well, they tell us she's a shell risk, so we anticipate seeing nothing here, and that's exactly what we got. No revenues coming in right now, which does surprise me. Let's take a look at the balance sheet. Ooh, cash in the bank. Not very much. $33,000. We got three zeros up here. Thank God for that. Total assets is only $90,000. Oh, wow. Look at the liabilities. E gads. Over $10 million. And all they've got is $90,000. So hopefully this merger deal is really going to make a big difference for them. Take a look at those disclosures for Raker. We've got 18K here which I can't remember what this was, but I don't think we need to look at it. Oh, this has to do with the news. Of course, I should have realized that. So let's jump on over to that news. So I have gone back here to last year, August, when they were discussing this merger deal. That's how long it's been. It's been over a year. Back in August, the company announced a joint development agreement with Miranda Water Treatment Systems. Then October of last year, Memorandum of Understanding was signed for this deal. Then in February, the company strengthens global operations with key resource additions. Now, I think I wanted to share this one with you. Rainmaker Worldwide announced the addition of key resources to its global operations team. Viva Industries, 
an investment company owned by entrepreneurs Michael Skinner, John Gillis, and Ryan Moore, will acquire a controlling interest in the Canadian subsidiary of Rainmaker Worldwide and will rename it Rainmaker Canada and Caribbean Inc. This acquisition will allow Rainmaker to focus on the growth of its global business while the Viva Industries team drives the growth of the Canadian and Caribbean markets. So they got a separate team that's going to work on their business in a whole nother area of the world. And that other piece of news I want to jump into, Memorandum of Understanding with Miranda. As a matter of fact, this isn't the one I want to show you. This is as close as we got. March. They're still talking about this Memorandum of Understanding. Well, a piece of news came out October 2nd, like I said. Well, right here is where I found it. Miranda Water Treatment Systems and Rainmaker Worldwide together sign on the acquisition. Finally, over a year. This acquisition is being executed by Rainmaker Worldwide. Currently, Miranda has installations in more than 35 countries and Raker will enable the expansion of this reach with its global scope and broaden the portfolio of water treatment products. The addition of a strong and strategic financial partner further fortifies the capability to expand our global commercial footprint. And we just looked at that the Inviticus or whatever they call themselves. They've got a new investment group that's helping them as well. This deal they say will close hopefully before the end of the year. Fingers crossed. They've got about a month and a half to do that. So we've got a deal here. This company is already in 35 countries. I'm not quite sure how many countries Rainmaker is in. They are in a lot of different places. As I always tell you, there's a lot more due diligence to do than I'm sharing with you. We just don't have enough time to go through it all. So you've seen what the potential is here. This should bring in revenues and that's the big deal. We don't want them to be a shell risk. We want them making money. And as soon as this closes, whatever money they're making is going to go on the books for Rainmaker. That's what we're looking at here. So let's go take a look at this chart. Taking a look at Raker, ticker R-A-K-R. This is Rainmaker Worldwide, and we are looking at a one-day, one-year chart. It was a full year ago when we hit our 52-week high of about 1.2 cents, and at the end of September, we hit a low of 0006. And as you can clearly see, she has been in a downtrend the entire year, never even getting close to that 200, not once this entire year until right now here recently when all that volume came into the picture. Jumping down to that six month, four hour view, our high now is 0066. On our six month chart, we did have a break through the 200, short lived as it was, came back down, fell down to that low bubble and notice, once we had that low bubble come into the picture, that's when the volume came in. There was nothing before, and now we've got all kinds of volume. Right behind the low bubble, we had a directional intentional spike. Starting down here through the 200 and spiking above it, and then coming down no lower than where it started, right? So now I'm going to watch this. I'm going to expect it to break out, and I'm going to be expecting it to crouch. Honestly, I expect it to come down low now, getting ready to pounce. And that's what it did. It crouched and pounced, jumping from triple zero eight all the way up to double zero three two. Take away all those zeros, you're going from eight to 32. That's 400% run, folks. Then she came back down, landed on this nine day SMA. And for the last few days, she's just been working it on that nine day SMA. Our 20, our 50, our 200 haul, they're all turning up, crossing the 50 as they're working their way up. It looks good. Our oscillators, everything is strong in the four hour chart, but there is a bit of cool down. Everything is kind of leveled off here, except for our RSI, it's actually pushing up. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour view. So she was dribbling downhill, hit that low, bounced up above the 200, crouched and pounced. Now on that pounce, I'm going to grab my Fibonacci. I do this for any big rip or any big dip. I hit one extreme and then I tag the other extreme. And what I'm looking for is the center line, the 50% mark right there. Now you can use these lines here as supports and resistances to trade right now, but I'm just showing you what I particularly like to use this for. Let me get rid of all the Fibonacci. 
there's my 50% mark. I want to see my price above the 50% mark. If it's below, chances are she's going to start to fall and fall more. If she's above it, chances are she's going to grow and grow more. Well, she got all the way up here to her high, fell down to that halfway point, went underneath, but that's not a fall. That's the magnet effect. She is stuck right up underneath, so that's okay. Then she jumped back up on top, and now she's playing with her 20-day SMA. She's tagged it a few times, but you can see she is now starting her ascent all over. And here comes some help. We've got the 50-day and the 200-day SMAs coming right up behind her. 200-day haul, that is. Our oscillators, well, we got a increase in strength on our PPO right now. It is just now starting to pull away from that pink line. We have a crossover imminent on our MACD and our RSI is still climbing. And we've got my favorite pattern, my PPO. It is starting to go up right now. And my ADX, this tells me every time my trend changes, the direction of this line changes. Well, the pattern, when that blue line is going up and that red line is going down and they're getting further apart, guaranteed 100% your price is rising. So this is all looking pretty good right now. Coming down to that five day, five minute. Lots of volatility here. Hit this high, came down to that 50% mark just underneath it. And whoa, look what we got here. A brand new SMA. The 200 day just came into the picture. And as I always say, in most cases, you will see the price go to the new SMA. Regardless of where it's at, above the price, below the price, I always like to see it above the price. Well, once it came into the picture, it beelined to it, got a super low here, bounced back up, she's hit it, and now she's respecting the 200. And she has finally negotiated. She's had enough handshaking. Looks like she is ready to pull away right now. Osculators. And let me zoom in on this guy. I know we can get a better view of this right there. All right. So our PPO is pushing up right now. It has been negotiating for a while. Our MACD is doing the same thing, starting to push away. And our RSI has been climbing little by little on every single chart. I'm liking Raker. She isn't making any money right now, but that's one of the catalysts. As soon as this deal closes, they're in the money. <laughs> They've got money on the books. So what we need to see are the financials for the other company. That's going to tell us what's going on here. But in the meantime, the chart looks like Raker's going to break out. So put it on your watch list. Now, maybe you noticed this stock today. If you were trading, she was one of the hot runners. This is Intrusion Inc ticker INTZ, INTZ. Now, INTZ had a good day. She had big news come out today about a big contract deal that she was closing and the charts exploded real fast. She took on 100% gains before she fell back. But what was really impressive, really explosive was the volume. It just went off the charts today. So it's, she finished today at 43 and a quarter cents with about 23 and a half percent gains. And she is on the major exchange. So you're going to be able to trade this for free, trade it pre-market, after market. And I would keep my eye on this one tomorrow, pre-market. So what does Intrusion do? They're into cybersecurity. Intrusion Inc. is a global provider of entity identification, high-speed data mining, cybercrime, and advanced persistent threat detection products. Intrusion's product families include TraceCop for identity discovery and disclosure, and Savant for network data mining and advanced persistent threat detection. Intrusion's products help protect critical information assets by quickly detecting, protecting, analyzing, and reporting attacks or misuse of classified, private and regulated information for government and enterprise networks. So what was that relative volume today? Are you ready? <laughs> Boom. Look at that folks. She jumped from under 300,000 shares to over 38 million shares today. That is well over a hundred times her normal volume. You're talking about a 10,000% increase. That's why we're looking at it. And that's why I think she's got more to give tomorrow. Share structure for INTS. 
Well, it looks like we've got a decent float, whatever it is. Our outstanding share count is only at 23 million. They don't give us any other information we can trust here. All we know is our float isn't going to be any higher than that. Market cap for this company is only 8 million. Looking at the financials for Ints. Well, she had a real good year back in 2019. Looks like COVID had an effect on her. And right now at the end of 2022, she did $7.5 million worth of business and she got to keep over 50% of that for profit. Looking at her quarterly, well, she was better off a year ago, but she's coming up. She's hanging around $1.4, $1.5 million and getting to keep most of that as profit. Looking at that balance sheet, in the bank, they have got $300,000 and they got $211,000 coming in. Total assets, $4.6 million and total liabilities, a little bigger than that. 14, no, let's call it $15 million. So you're looking at about three times the liabilities. Taking a look at those disclosures. Oh yeah, we've got some good news over here. Back here is an S1. An S1 is what you put out when you're going to have a public offering. And they were going to sell a lot of stuff. They were going to sell units, which are shares of stock and warrants. They were going to sell just shares of stock. They were going to sell just warrants. They were going to sell a lot. They were going to increase the float and make themselves some money. But this RW right here that just came out cancels it. They told NASDAQ, we're, we are rescinding it. We don't want it. Don't do it. Please pull it off. Stop the S1's effect. So hopefully we shouldn't see any more shares coming onto the market. Now, there was a little more information on one of these 8Ks. There was a lot of information here, but I found this dead in the center. They have been contacted by the NASDAQ. They have fallen below a dollar for too long. On the major exchange, they've got what's called a minimum bid price requirement. You can't go under a dollar for too long. If you're there too long, they'll give you a chance to come back up. If you don't do it, you're out of here. They kick you off the major exchange down to the OTC. Well, they have been given a deadline up until March 25th of 2024. So they've got some time. They need to get this price over a dollar 10 days straight. They got to close over a dollar for 10 days straight and then voila, they're out of hot water and everything is kosher. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. Now I've only got one piece of news here. They've got a few pieces, but there's no real news. They're just talking about their financials. This came out today. Intrusion awarded a $5 million multi-year shield agreement with a large telecommunication provider and reports additional customer wins. There was extra news in this I wasn't aware of until I read all the way through it. Intrusion Inc., a leader in cyber attack prevention solutions, including zero days, today announced that it has been awarded a $5 million agreement with a large telecommunications provider to provide Intrusion Shield support for its data centers. The award includes a phased rollout of Intrusion Shield beginning in the fourth quarter of this year and builds on a successful pilot that began in the first quarter of this year. The terms of the five year award allow for further expansion of the use of the Intrusion Shield with the possibility of generating additional revenue after the completion of the initial set of projects. During the third quarter of 2023, Intrusion also booked four other new contracts which are also expected to grow over time and i didn't see that anywhere in the news so i was unaware of it we are excited to announce this multi-year agreement which utilizes our capabilities in protecting critical infrastructure from cyber attacks with this award and the other four new contracts across diverse industries we signed in the third quarter we see signs that our go-to market strategy with partners is working Intrusion will provide further information about the transaction with the large telecommunications provider after final implementation details have been agreed upon and a public announcement ceremony has been scheduled. So this is the big deal. This is what's got the volume going from 300,000 to over 32 million. And I think there's probably going to be some leftovers tomorrow. And I do think that watching it pre-market is a smart move. Let's go take a look at this chart. 
the itsy bitsy spider that's not how it goes is it no this is intsy i-n-t-z intrusion inc and we're looking at a one day one year chart it was back in october of last year we had our 52 week high of five dollars and 77 cents in october of this year that we have our 52 week low of 27 cents and obviously she has been in a downtrend all of this time with no volume to talk about ever until today. It exploded. And if you look close, you can see all of our oscillators are showing signs of recovery on the one year chart. Coming down to that six month, four hour view. We've got a high back here at the end of January of $3 and 96 cents. She's tapping on that 200, which she likes to do a lot. She's been hitting that 200 often, and then she fell away down to this low. Now, she has been bouncing off of this low simply because it's a 52-week low. She had no catalyst over here. She was working her way up, and once she got on top of the 50, simultaneously the news came out and she exploded, jumping from 33 cents up to 60 cents, about 85% gains. Then she fell back on top of her nine-day SMA. Fully what we expect. It's picture perfect. No problems here. All of our SMAs are going in the right direction, looking good. Our oscillators, we have got a crossover on our PPO. It's pushing up. We just crossed the signal line with the MACD. The only thing here is that our RSI is falling down. She's taking a big drop. As you can see, we had a big drop here. Now, just FYI, in case you didn't know, if we were to change all these bars on this chart and make it a line, the line you see on the chart would be exactly the line you see down here because this is the price line. So whenever the price falls here, of course your RSI is falling. That's why everybody gets excited when the RSI is going up. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. High here is 61 and a half cents. Look at the steepness of these SMAs. I mean, they are coming down fast and furious. But look, they've all come together real tight. They're just about ready to shoot and dart across that 200-day SMA. We did have a big jump. She's fallen down actually below her 9-day SMA. Now, the 20 is crossing the 200. Here comes the 50 behind it. This gives strength, an updraft to the price. So even though she's falling, this could actually help push it, give it that spring, the ricochet we're looking for. The volume was real strong today. It was getting less and less through the day, but still real strong compared to any other day. Oscillators, they were very hot and they're starting to cool off right now a lot. But look at our 200 day SMA. That is just about level. I don't expect her to come back underneath the 200. Looking at our five day, five minute. So she was over the 200 and dribbled down to that low bubble, 52 week low, started working her way up without any catalyst, got up here the other day without any catalyst, said, well, now that I'm over the 200, what am I going to do? I need a reason to run. And you can see she was getting ready to dip. She had no reason to run. She was going to come back down here and probably test the 200. And at that point in time came the news and she shot immediately from 33 up to 60, just like that pre-market. And then came back down and she rolled that nine day SMA all the way up to the high, which she hit at quarter to 11. She came back down. Looks like she was hitting her 200 day haul scraping across that until she lost it, came down through everything, landed hard on the 200 day SMA and she's negotiating with it. And it looks like she's winning that negotiation right now. All of our oscillators look like they're just coming up right now. Everything is in the midst of recovery. I like Ince, she's got hot news. She had an explosion of volume today. Don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but because of the news, because of the explosion, because of the jump, we got to watch it. It doesn't hurt to watch it. So put this, like the other two, on your watch list. Keep them on your watch list. This is where all of our due diligence pays us from, not anywhere else. But this is only my due diligence. Go do your own due diligence. I'm giving you a heads up on stocks that I think are hot, but you're the one putting money on them. So you go do your own due diligence. Okay, remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.